How's it going everybody? Um, so I'm making a wall crawling tutorial. This is actually meant to kind of encompass everything there is not only about kind of how out of bounds works but also kind of how how to optim uh, how to get through wall crawls. Um, first of all just know that it is very difficult if you're just starting off at this so don't be surprised you know if, if you feel a little bit of frustration. Um, that's kind of the reason I'm making this video. There isn't a whole lot of actual documentation on pretty much any of this stuff. So I'm going to start off today using um, what is known as the IBBF, uh, Ice Beam Before Flagra. It, it's a wall crawl that is used both in 100% and any percent uh, as a way to not only get through um, this entire section of runes leading all the way to Hall of the Others um, faster than you'd be able to do it inbounds, but also um, in Hundo, for example, in 100%, for example, it's used to actually get the Ice Beam before you fight Flagra. Now, that's, that's I'm getting a little ahead of myself there. That's, uh, there's a lot that you can, you'll need to know before you worry about getting the Ice Beam before Flagra. So, first of all, I'm in Gathering Hall right now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use what we refer to as a secret world to get out of bounds. The secret world is just the term that we use to ex describe any place that you're getting out of bounds, basically. There are many secret worlds found throughout Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime 2 Echoes and whatnot. Um, and they can be anything from using like a morph ball to, to relocate yourself out of bounds in certain places. Um, certain enemies can push you out of bounds like gliders. And for the mass majority of them, you're actually just jumping out of the boundary of the map by using standable spots to get places that the game intenders, that the game producers didn't intend you to be able to get to. Um, For this particular secret world, you need to first jump to this branch over here, um, and I'll kind of start explaining the out of bounds mechanics here once I actually get out of bounds. So, to get to this branch, it's pretty easy. You can just jump to it, and then you can just just jump to this ledge here, and then you're gonna need to perform a ghetto jump off of the slope, and push yourself up out of this hole. The collision surrounding this particular one. <clears throat> Um, you need to make sure that you're in between either of these two sides and above that and then push yourself straight forward through it. Now I'll get to this in a second when I'm actually there but just know that as you're going through this hole you want to keep pushing forward to prevent uh, a bad thing from happening. So you'll see I, I kept pushing forward there. So I'll just actually show you right now what would have happened if I would not have. See how I just fell like that all the way into the bottom of this room? That's because this room is enclosed inside of a box. Outside of this box is open space basically. And when you're in this open space, you will maintain whatever height that you happen to be at. However, as soon as you cross over the boundary into the space that the room it resides in, you'll notice that I fell a little bit right there. That's because I entered into this room's box. Uh, the distance that you're going to fall is generally pretty relevant to however low the floor of the, the, that room is. So, for example, in this room I would have I fall this far, but if I were up in this room up in East Atrium, I would only fall to the bottom of that room. Crossing over into the boundary of this room's box, however, would then cause you to fall all the way back down to the bottom there. The way that I picture each room's box is kind of a... like a, a rectangular box that just encloses all of the space. So, for example, this little, like, kind of part that's indented 
on the in the bottom in the bottom right corner over there that whole space right there is actually still open uh is still this room's box you want to basically draw a line straight from each of the farthest doors so the door on the top all the way over to the missile door leading to the save straight down until you would reach the distance that the farthest point the room reaches um, and in some cases that's actually farther out than the door is so the door on the bottom there is a little bit further in than that little morph ball tunnel sticks out the ether boundary would actually extend all the way to the corner of that um, morph ball tunnel and then again you draw a line straight up encompassing every you know anything that would be inside of this box now this is important for a technique called ether jumping which i will get to in a in a moment but it's just important to first understand that's one of the more most basic things that you're going to want to understand about wall crawling so as i fall into the ether into the floor of this ether here now's a good time to explain ether jumping so ether jumping is going to be used to basically gain height in any room out of bounds that you are either if you fall into the floor of the ether or in some cases is actually used to to actually just navigate out of bounds to get to the door to transition to the next room um that's typically used a little bit more in like low percent wall crawling than than any percent i can't actually think of any um times in any percent that in any percent speed run for example in any of the wall crawls where that's actually used but it's very handy to know how to do there's two ways to go about ether jumping uh the way that i would recommend a, anybody starting off a beginner learn is what we call corner ether jumping so again you want to picture this box is this room's box again and you want to put yourself right in that spot where the corner would be so as you can see i'm going to want to move a little bit left and a little bit back so a little bit left and a little bit back if i keep pushing forward you'll see i fall that means i have then fallen into basically the farthest point that that corner extends to now the next thing you're going to want to do is direction yourself to kind of be like looking diagonally through the room what this does is puts you in a position to once you get this ether jump you're going to be able to use this corner basically you're going to be strafing in and out of the ether outside of this room's box and any time that you then strafe through the center of that corner you're going to be in gathering hall's ether box at this point you'll be allowed an ether jump um the frame window for that is three frames uh, you have three frames once you've crossed over the boundary to input the jump and that will give you the ether jump now the reason using a corner is a little bit easier is it allows you to if you miss one of the inputs when you fall you're not going to fall all the way down to the bottom again you're going to fall kind of sideways into this into that you know ether that is outside of that room's box and keep your height um so to do this you'll see samus is bobbing a little bit that means that you have an ether jump ready for you and to start it off typically you're just going to want to kind of like mash b until you get an ether jump so then you want to press back um until you are you know stuck in the height that you jumped to the next part to finding the corner is you kind of want to strafe left and right a little bit and see make sure that you were in the corner um as you notice i kind of fell kind of far right there which meant i wasn't truly in the corner um and so as you can see i'm kind of like finding uh this is a bad spot to find the corner i'm actually intersecting two ether boxes right there which is kind of a just picture like that room was actually like loaded basically and that so i was basically fall, um trying to use a corner but also there was an adjacent ether box next to it 
So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna line myself up with this door there and line myself up with the farthest that this collision sends right here. I'm gonna look half diagonally through the room and as you can see I'm bobbing up and down and I actually think I might have like nailed the corner for yeah I did. So you'll see I strafe left and right. Now when you're doing this it's very important to make big wide sweeping movements and just go left and right. Um, if for example you need to adjust where Samus is you don't want to do it all at once. You want to strafe and then if you need to for example back up a little bit then you just press back once you've gotten far enough over to the right and then do another big long strafe. As you can see there what that did was it put me behind the corner of the ether box and so then again to find it I would make sure that I strafe nice and far to the left there push forward just a little bit you never want to do large adjustments um, you want to keep them minimal uh, just for safety reasons so I, I strafed a little bit uh, forward there and now as you can see again I dropped so I found the corner of the ether box now again you strafe over the ledge and you have three frames to input the jump command if you do this you can use it to gain height um, while I'm doing this I might as well explain what the skywalk is the skywalk is going to be kind of your best friend for a little while um, there isn't a whole many times where getting to the skywalk is actually the optimal strat for getting around out of bounds however it is one of the safer um, as you can see as long as you're above the ceiling of this room and in the skywalk I can walk around free as a bird right now and not have to worry about falling into that, you know, falling down anywhere. Now, that that's just important because if, 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 if you're having trouble and you need to get to the next room, that, that, that can oftentimes be a good way to go about doing that. Um, I suppose now I can kind of explain how the collision works and then I'll get to door transitions. So as you can see I'm standing on something right now and I'm able to move around and operate freely. Um, this is because you're basically able to stand on all corners of the rooms. Like So basically the, 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 the corners of these rooms are, are all standable. Um, whereas Most of areas that aren't like collision vertices basically or corners, this will happen to you. I'm bobbing up and down and as you can see I'm like pressing buttons and like pretty much nothing is happening. Um, this is because you're stuck. To get unstuck, all you need to do is use your morph ball. Know that this is a little bit dangerous at first if you're not used to it because if you're out in ether, if you're above any open space in ether and you go into morph ball mode, you're going to fall very, very quickly and very far. And normally it can actually be, it can become unrecoverable very fast. For example, if you fall below the floor of any ether box, you're going to have to do what we call float up to the point where you will be able to get an ether jump. Now, Depending on how fast you were falling, you may actually fall farther into the ether box than, or fall farther below it than, you know, you would with less speed. That's assuming that you have the wherewithal to actually unmorph. Now, <laughs> um, if you don't unmorph, obviously you're just going to fall way too far in it. Floating is very slow, and it can take a very long time to get that ether jump if you do. A lot of times it's just a reset. Now, I'm gonna follow this, these kind of. You can you can always tell where the pot spots that you'd be able to stand on because you can kind of see like there's a collision right here, and on top of that tip of that, I'll be able to stand. Again, so I'm just gonna kind of follow collision. Same applies with walls. So like you can see that there's like some stuff sticking out right there. You can actually stand on that stuff. Now. What I did right there is actually a good way to recover in this room. Um, if you were to fall out of bounds, or fall kind of, for example. So from here, 
I'm just gonna jump around. Now this isn't actually the best door to explain um, transitions with because it is a little bit. I mean, I, it, it'll be fine to explain tr transitions, but just know that this is actually kind of a difficult jump at first. Um, I'll shoot this door here to kind of explain what I'm talking about. You'll see that there's basically the collision for this room is right there, and the collision for this room is right here, and then there's also a ceiling above you. So you basically need to like wedge Samus. You need to get more height than the door, and you need to be squeezed in between the space. But you can't jump too high because there's a ceiling above you. So in this particular one, you need to jump into this like tight little space. So this is now what I'll, I'll now I'll cover door transitions. So it's kind of the essence of wall crawling in Metroid Prime is that you need to to progress farther and load each room. We do what we call door transitioning. Now there's a lot of different types of door transitions that you're going to run across while wall crawling out of bounds, and they all kind of have the the things that the variables that will kind of set each one apart from each other. Um, you'll kind of just need to learn over time, but there are some basics to understand about it. First of all, Metroid Prime can only have two rooms loaded at once. And when if you were to go and try and load a third room without having two rooms previous from that unload and be unloaded, as you transition into that next room, uh, the game is going to crash on you. Uh, so that's kind of part of what door transitioning is. Not only is it getting the game to, to recognize that you're now in the next room, it's also kind of the, the the door transitions are going to vary depending on um, whether or not rooms need to be unloaded as you go or not. Um, for this one in particular, all you need to do is strafe across the top of the door. So as you can see, I'm pushing myself as far to the right right now as I possibly can, and I'm pushed up against the wall of Gathering Hall. This means I'm above Gathering Hall's door. To tell the game that I'm going to the next room, I simply push left until I stop. Like, you can't go any farther left. That's because I'm pushed up against the wall of the invisible room. Which, by the way, quick side note, uh, we refer to this room that's invisible right now as secretized. It is there. It, the, the collision is loaded, but it isn't visually there for you. Um, there's also cases where this room wouldn't be here right now, and that room is just simply not there. It's unloaded. It's not secretized. It's not there, period. To get that room to appear there, that I will be covering when I cover, you know, a, a, a different type of door transitions. This one in particular, since it's already there, simply just push left until you stop moving and jump. However, in this particular one, like I said, it's a little bit weird. It doesn't work because you can't actually jump. Really, the game isn't really registering that I'm 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 jumping very high. This one you actually need to for the sake of if you're trying to learn how to do the IBBF here, you need to actually be like I get, I like to get about as far to the corner as of this door as I can, like right about here, and I jump forward while making sure I'm still to the left of Gathering Hall's door. Once I've jumped forward and know that I've cleared the collision that's above me right here, I want to use my space jump to jump backwards. Now. You'll see what happens here when I do this. This room actually loaded as I jumped out of that space. Now when I jumped backwards, what I did was I just jumped backwards just a little bit and I landed on the collision on top of this room right here, East Atrium. And now if you were to go to my, my map here, you'll see that East Atrium is actually now, the game thinks I'm in East Atrium. So, to get to the next door here, 
basically you can space jump up into the ether or skywalk and just walk over to the next door and go into morph ball mode once you're above it and fall onto it um or if you are you know feeling a little bit more daring you can time your space jump pretty late because the ether the the skywalk for this room is pretty low meaning that space jumping quickly is going to just put you up into the skywalk so if you want to avoid being in the skywalk you're going to need to time it a little bit later and the spot that you're actually aiming for you'll see that there's like a branch sticking out of the ceiling right there to the right and a little behind that branch there's a whole bunch of standable spots so i usually just jump forward and space jump kind of late now like i said behind it works on that vertice um the spot i landed in i happen to just know to be standable but be careful because the closer you get to this branch the ground does become unstandable once again so this will be a little bit of a better door to kind of show you just how simply how you know, show how easy the uh this type of door transition can be because it, there isn't any weird collision above it so to get to this next door i just usually stand on this corner here and i jump over to it now again pushing to the left I didn't even have to jump this time because the collision is so low right there that I actually just strafed on top of it. Um, basically you're just trying to clear the plane of that door once you've strafed across the top of it. And yet again, the game now registered that I went from East Atrium to Energy Core Access. So that that that's the basic, the easiest type of door transition that you're going to deal with in, in wall crawling. Um, they can vary from anywhere from easy, like that one was, to pretty obscenely difficult sometimes. And some of them are just randomly and randomly weird and have very strange method for getting it to load. I'm not going to really cover that in this tutorial because it's not going to be necessary to know. And by the time you get to a point like that in your wall crawling endeavors, you're probably going to know enough about wall crawling to kind of just understand what to do at that point. Um, I'm not going to cover all the diff different types of door transitions all at once right here because it's going to be kind of hard to explain them without actually being able to do it. Um, but just never fear there, you know, the they will be coming up in this wall crawl and I'll be able, most of them, and I'll be able to cover them then. So now getting back to kind of how you get through this particular wall crawl just know that they're all completely different so it, you gotta just kind of learn how what the movement the general movement for each wall crawl is and then kind of just try to copy it and recreate it in order to start doing it consistently in this room it is pop you can just jump up into this little like guy right here and then jump again and you'll be in the skywalk you don't actually want to navigate the top of this room uh, on, with the on the collision because there most of this top of this room is just completely unstandable you can do a technique that we call bunny hopping across it which is as you're pushing forward just like kind of mat smashing on the B button and for the most part it will keep you from getting stuck however it's a little inconsistent and you might still get stuck um, my personal strat that I use for this room and probably more commonly used. Once you see Samus lift up a little bit right there, if you jump and then space jump at the height of your first jump, and then at the height of your space jump push forward, you get stuck in the, the skywalk here. And now you're just free to walk across. Now this one you want to be a little bit careful. You want to stop when you're right about here because this room loads kind of as you're walking towards it and actually if you're going too fast you are going to kind of slide off of this corner here when you fall and it's actually really easy to get stuck in this invisible collision now that's actually a lot worse than it sounds um because this room is not yet loaded and it's this will work this will apply whether it's in a secretized state or not 
Um, if you were to get s stuck in the side of this wall here, you're going to do what we call soft lock the game, meaning that you you just can't continue basically. Uh, the game is just going to lock you in place and not let you move or do anything about it essentially. Um, the collision works differently for rooms that are not loaded when you're out of bounds. And so if the game were to think I'm in energy core access but you were in the stuck in the side of energy core's wall right there, it the game handles the collision differently and you just get stuck in it. Now, there are exceptions to this rule where you can get around it and actually using a room that isn't currently loaded is actually also used out of bounds in different wall crawls to, for example, in the wave sun wall crawl, it's used to get something that we call infinite speed, but I'll get to that later. The strat for this right here is you just want to kind of walk forward until you drop slowly until you drop onto the corner of this room here. You just want to make sure you're above this door and then push left until you fall again. You're going to fall and you're going to land on top of this door. Now, literally all you need to do is jump and all of a sudden energy core loads. Keep in mind that this entire time the way that these rooms work, because I'm not having to hit a loading trigger, sometimes you need to ha uh, you need to actually hit what we call a loading trigger to make the next room load. However, these rooms in particular start to load as soon as you cross the boundary on top of the door into this next room. Going into this next room causes the next room to load. It also causes Gathering Hall to then disappear as well. It's called dumping a room. Um, you can manually dump a room and sometimes you have to. I'll explain how to do that when it's actually relevant. But why this is important is this is part of what's going to cause random crashes for you when you're starting off wall crawling. And if you don't know anything about Out of Bounds, it may seem kind of random to you why it's happening and why it's not. Uh, the reason is because these rooms right here, there's only one way that you can go through them. There's only one room that can load. There isn't multiple doors and multiple pl places to go. So as soon as you walk through that door, the room just start. The next room just starts to load. However, we are now going to encounter our first instance of needing to actually hit a loading trigger in order to cause the next room to appear. Um, essentially. You're gonna, if you were to hit this loading trigger, you would walk over to this next door, and for the life of you, it's just, it, that room is just not gonna be there. Um, you can strafe on top of that door all day long, and it's not gonna make West Furnace Access appear. Because the only way to make West Furnace Access appear is to hit the loading trigger for it. Now, Loading triggers are actually found inbounds. They're what the game designers use as kind of a barrier that you cross through essentially to tell the game to start loading the next room. Um, after you've jumped on top of that door, you just need to jump and push forward and you'll kind of stand, land on a sandable spot here. From there, I like to just jump as far to this little sand, like this very thin ledge right here, and get to this spot right here. Um, next, you need to jump over to this corner right here. If you're again, if you're just starting this game, I actually do recommend kind of like just keeping in mind where that corner is mentally, then looking back down, kind of like around this area, and locking your view with L, and then just jumping over to it. Um, obviously you may not need to do that anymore once you're comfortable with it, but that does make it a little bit easier to make sure that you get to that because it might seem like a little bit of a scary jump to make if you're really new to this. If you go too far, you're obviously going to fall into this empty space right here and you're going to fall to the bottom of this room's ether floor. 
Now, you need to be careful because, again, this is just a flat surface with no collision sticking through it, and you're, you're going to get stuck on the ceiling right here. So to safely get to the next room, you just need to jump and follow this this corner, this, this line of collision. So this particular loading trigger that I'm talking about, basically the loading trigger in front of this door extends out of bounds just a little bit and it extends out to about like right there. Meaning that you can jump to that spot right there and you'll have hit the loading trigger to cause the next room to start loading. You need to be a little bit careful when you make this jump because everything around, like basically behind where the loading trigger goes to, is all, yet again, sticky or non-standable spot. Um, basically, I like to kind of like look diagonally before I make this jump because I'm going to keep my view locked that direction. Reason for this is, after landing on that corner, you actually need to jump around the corner and on top of the door. Um, and you actually kind of want to do this pretty fast with this door trans with this particular trigger in transition because weird state load states can occur if you do this incorrectly that will cause a different set of triggers to appear in the next room to load the next the one after that. Um, basically, just know that you want to try and do this as quickly as possible. Jump and land in this corner, and then jump again and land and push yourself on top of the door. Now if you did that correctly, now you can see when I'm shooting, there's actually something in front of me here. That means that room is then there. Again, you just want to push forward a little bit and jump. With this one in particular, the collision around this door is a little odd, and as you jump, you want to push forward again just slightly and land right on the corner of this room, like on the edge of this room right here. So this is kind of something weird to explain here. So you see how this room sticks out way further than this room? Like it sticks into this room? That actually means that this entire open space right here does not belong to this room's ether. It still belongs to this room's ether. Meaning that you're not going to fall just underneath this room. You're going to fall all the way down to the floor of this room's ether. To avoid falling in that ether box, you need to jump out to a point that extends beyond this. So right about there. Just simply space jumping out to it is all you need to do. And as you can see, I made it past that point and now I'm stuck up in the ether of this room, or stuck up above the skywalk of this room here. So this is where you need to now hit another invisible loading trigger. Um, you'll notice that the next room just isn't there right now. You want to picture kind of like a rectangle, like a square or rectangular box that fully fills the space inside of the more inside of the tunnel. So as Samus were walking through the tunnel there in bounds, it would cause the next room to start loading. However, you're not able to get you to hit that except for the fact that because it's a square box and this room has slanted ceilings on both sides the corner of that box extends out of bounds and it's a little bit tighter than um, it's a little bit of a tight like you need to actually land kind of on the lower side of the slant and I aim for right around this line right here you can kind of see the line right there you want to aim for that. You want to get above it and fall into morph ball mode. And unmorph like immediately because you probably, if that's just to be safe because you probably didn't, uh, if you're too low, you're just going to slide off basically and you want to prevent that from happening. Now if you listened real close, carefully when I landed, you heard the Wii make the, the loading sound. That's a good thing. That means that this room loaded properly. Um, the most effective way to get to this next room and uh, transition to it is actually to lay a morph uh, a bomb, let it explode, let it get you as high as you're gonna go, and unmorph. 
and then just stay in that height. Now, the, now what you're going to want to do is make sure that you put uh, directionalize yourself to be directly above this door, like in the center, essentially. Now, just know that any lower than that, and this just isn't going to work, and any higher, it's also not going to work. It's like one morph ball bomb is basically like the perfect height to be at for this. I will also take a quick side note. Take a quick uh, side note here to explain the fact that sometimes while you're learning this wall crawl, you're going to land on that spot and it's just not going to cause this next room to load. Um, that might be because you're not landing on the right spot, but if you spend some time bombing around and make, you know, and you're pretty sure that you've landed in a spot that looks like the spot that I landed in in the video here, and it still doesn't load, that's because you didn't do that last room correctly or quick enough, probably. That caused a different loading trigger to be the active one. That different loading trigger is like right about here-ish. So again, imagine that rectangle sticking out of bounds and it's right behind this black line. You want to land in Morph Ball kind of like right in that little like crevice right there. If you do that, that will more than likely cause that room to load. There's actually also one instance that can occur very rarely where neither of those work I'm actually not 100% sure what causes that in particular, um, and if that's the case, you can do something that we call force loading the room. This is a technique that will always work to load a room. It will always, regardless of hitting a loading trigger or not, this will always cause the next room to load. The danger with this is it doesn't mean that the last room unloaded yet. Because you haven't hit a loading trigger, any room that you had loaded previously is still going to be there. And if you were to try and force load this room while energy core was still visible back there, it's going to crash the game because you loaded one too many rooms. So that I do, I do put a, I will put a warning label on that and say that that isn't exactly the safest thing to do. If you don't know what you're doing. The reason you always just want to go for the loading trigger versus just doing a force load is because hitting that loading trigger serves two purposes. Not only does it load the next room, but it unloads the room behind you as well. So now, because I am ready to transition here, I'll get one more ball bomb height up. Shoot, make sure the doors are, and I'm gonna keep pushing forward until I see Samus's arm cannon kind of like bob up and down right there. That actually means that this worked and that I fell onto the next room's door. To transition it, simply jump. Space jump and push forward. You're gonna get stuck on this little like pole that's sticking, that's right here. And then you just wanna jump, space jump and push forward and you're gonna land on another standable spot. From here, this is a good example of a room that has two very different methods for getting around to the next door slash loading trigger because yet again this is a room that's going to require a loading trigger to make the next room uh, load. You can do a little bit of a slower but safer strat where you kind of jump back up and land in the ether behind you and you're going to want to make sure that you get nice and far out here because again just because this room it sticks just because this room is a little bit further back keep in mind that because this room extends this far out all that space right there is going to make you fall to the bottom of that room so you want to make sure that you've given it kind of a wide berth and you can actually just use this then to walk very safely and i albeit rather slowly around until you've gotten to this next, until you've gotten over here. Um, I'm not gonna, I'll, I'll hold off on explaining where that loading trigger is um, because I'm also going to show and demonstrate that you can use collision as well to get across. Um, so 
I'm just gonna kind of get myself to the so again I'm just gonna repeat what I just did there and get up to the spot right here so this is what they call a left side furnace and there's a couple of different there's actually a whole bunch of different ways you can do this and it's not that it's much harder by any means but it is if I mean it's safer to take the the, the ether but this all this is is just using some collision to get across now the safer method here is that there is an invisible wall right here and you can jump to it um, and stand on top of the invisible wall keep in mind that this invisible wall is very very thin and that you need to jump on top of it if you were to jump to the left here you get stuck on top of that collision if you were to jump to the right of it you're gonna fall into the, the ether there and you can just use this to walk all the way across. Um, you can also, if you're feeling daring, jump from that spot I was just at all the way over to this pipe, which is actually your destination either way. So I'm gonna jump to the pipe there. Um, next, I'm going to jump around this corner a little bit and kind of wedge myself into the wall in between some of these, like, whatever these are, like rods that are sticking out or whatever. Um, from here, I just like, I personally like to look down a little bit, just kind of give my, because of the fact that the spot that I'm going to be jumping to next is pretty, pretty small, uh, pretty unforgiving. If you jump too far forward, you're going to fall to the ether again. If you jump too far to the, like not far enough, you're going to get stuck on some, on some sticky ceiling. And it might seem very scary at first if you're not comfortable with this kind of thing, but you just need to jump sideways out a bunch and then use your space jump to push yourself forward onto the standable spot the very far corner of this is standable now there's other standable spots but this is the safe bet from here your goal is to basically just jump out into this blackness as far as you can i like to r jump and turn sideways as i'm doing so <clears throat> as you can see i just got stuck out in the, the space out here. Um, the loading trigger to cause this room to appear it, you can touch from out of bounds by landing on the upper of these two standable spots. These two little th th this extends out of bounds just far enough to stand on and so does this upper platform up here. The upper platform um, will cause you to hit the loading trigger. Um, kind of the strap for this is just to kind of walk forward as fast as possible and just land on it. Um, what, what's going to happen there is you're going to cross over the boundary of the ether box and you're going to fall, but because you have enough forward momentum, you're going to land on the standable spot here, which really doesn't look standable at all. Now, landing on that spot, oh, I got stuck, which means you did not soft log. Keep in mind that the game thinks I'm in furnace, so it's very unlikely that you got stuck like soft lock stuff. That will happen if you collide into the room's wall at a weird angle kind of thing. Um, the way to get fix that is to simply morph and unmorph quickly, and you will be unstuck. So from here, you need to jump around to the side and jump on top of this door. Now that's actually a little bit trickier than it sounds because of the fact that this room is loaded. There's a little bit of a ledge here and it if you don't land directly on top of the door, you're not going to be on top you're going to be on the ledge to the left of it. But also there's like some funky collision also above this door, so you got it's kind of a a finicky jump. But once you're on top of the door, simply just jump and push left and you'll load East Furnace access. From here I just like to jump and get into the skywalk here. And again we're going to be using an invisible loading trigger to drop Furnace and make Hall of the Elders appear. To do that I like to, it's, it's right about here by the way. Um, just a little bit behind that black line it's like right about there okay so what i just now what i just did 
if if that happens to you when you do this just know that you want to get the hell out of dodge as quickly as possible and get behind this uh, room right here the reason for that is because hall of the elders box is actually larger than it again it sticks out farther and everything in front of this room right here is actually like you're gonna fall like down there basically and because you haven't transitioned into Hall of the Others yet, everything's going to stay black like this. Uh, meaning you're just going to be chilling out down there in total blackness. It's actually not, um, does not mean that you need to reset necessarily, but it does make recovering a little bit more difficult. So as you can see, I got an ether jump here. I'm bobbing up and down. I'm going to mash B until I get a jump. And I'm just going to get, I'm just going to get myself on top of this room. Um, I'm going to morph ball and morph ball bomb as soon as I'm on top of this room because I'm going to get back up into the skywalk here. Now just know that the spot that I landed on right there is actually standable. Uh, like if you do this correctly, I'm going to real slowly strafe and fall. Uh, this little thing sticking out right here is actually standable. Um, so is the point right above that black line, like where the two black lines intersect right there, that's also a standable spot. Everything else is sticky. So you just want to make sure Holt is actually there. Um, so shoot at it a couple times. And this is probably one of the weirdest jumps you're going to make in this wall crawl. There's like a rock sticking out of bounds that's like right here that's going to just simply push. You're not, you can't land on it and you're just going to hit it and fall. If you don't clear this right there, you're also going to just fall. So you need to aim for kind of like right there-ish. Now, you need to be extremely careful when loading this next room. Basically, the loading trigger to cause this room to appear is about an inch to maybe like to a half an inch behind a trigger that causes a ghost the ghost and hope to appear if that happens this door locks and so does all the other doors meaning that a bit of a harder door transition awaits you at the top because your your destination is reflecting pool access here and that room is going to be locked that door is going to be locked if you cause the ghost to appear. Um, it is still possible to get into that room. It's just a little bit trickier. Now, to cause the ghost to not appear, basically work your way until you're about as close to, in front into the side of this door as possible. And just kind of push forward very carefully until you see Samus lift up a little bit right there and then stop because you are about a millimeter away from the loading trigger. If I were to move any farther, any farther at all, I'm going to make that ghost, I'm going to hit that trigger and that ghost fight is going to, uh, that ghost is going to appear. So you need to be very careful. Eventually you'll probably end up getting comfortable at the spot and you don't need to take it quite that slow. Um, it's pretty convenient, but there is actually a standable ledge that sticks out a little bit out of bounds here. As you can see, I'm shooting something. That means I can stand on it. And then my bullets start going into nothingness there. So all of that is actually standable. I'm going to use that to my advantage right now. And I'm going to jump out to it. Now you can also just jump to this next point too, but just know that this is standable. Um, this rock right here is a nice, convenient spot to use to jump to the next standable spot which is actually this peg that's sticking out of the wall right there right there um this jump is a little weird that peg has kind of like a rounded collision on top of it and it might take a couple of tries to kind of get used to jumping on top of it but you just need to space jump and get on top of that peg now there's the three beams that you can, the be, three be, uh, slot morph ball bomb slots covered by a beam cover um, in the wall over there. 
kind of behind this area right here, you're actually going to be jumping to that area over there. Um, this jump is arguably the most difficult in the entire wall crawl. And so this is may or may not be where you kind of spend a, a, a little bit of time. Now I'm going to purposely fall to the bottom of this room's ether here in a second to show a recovery for it just because it will probably save you some heartache to no one. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do this and I'm going to opt to do this first. If you push yourself into the far corner of this right there, uh oh, it's going to happen sooner than later. <laughs> That's okay because I wanted to anyways. Um, if you follow the floor of this room right here, just know that there is a pretty quick recovery for you. Um, kind of stand right some kind of like almost underneath this like tunnel, more ball tunnel right there and just get far enough out from underneath it that you won't hit your head on it and you'll see that you still have an ether jump available to you. Um, just space jump on top of this morph ball tunnel and you can walk forward. These three guys sticking out of the top of this room here, the corners of each of those are standable. If you jump to this one here, you're actually at a nice height to where if you space out your jumps here and get optimal height and push right at, at the highest that you can possibly go, you're actually very close to the floor of this room's ether box and all you need to do is basically get one ether jump and space jump and you can get you you know get stuck on top of this room's uh, collision again uh, in morph ball and bomb out of it. Um, so that's a nice easy recovery if you happen to fall, which. I'm just saying will probably happen at least once while you're doing IBBFs. Now as you can see I chose to stand on this standable spot this time because from here you can easily just space jump out to that rock again and attempt this jump again. So that time I jumped into the wall there. Um, I'm not going to do that this time but just know that that is a safer way to maybe get to the next spot if you're uncomfortable with this jump, which I personally like to just jump out into this open space here. And then before or kind of during my space jump, I'm going to let go of L and re and turn a little bit to be facing that way and then hold L again. So oh, I actually didn't get a very nice jump there. Um, Doing that, you can actually wedge yourself into this little nice, conveniently placed spot out of bounds. <laughs> An actual standable ledge that just extends out of bounds. Um, from here, you're going to now attempt your very first warp back in bounds. There's different ways to get back in bounds. In fact, there's tons of different ways, and you can really do it pretty much anywhere. Um, just as long as certain variables are held true. In this particular instance, it's actually kind of a tricky one. Um, others are going to be a lot maybe more forgiving than this. However, essentially, this room does not exist yet. The loading trigger for it, I think you can touch it at some point. Maybe? I'm not actually sure. I don't know if I've ever tried or done it. However, Essentially to cause this to, to get this room to load because I'm basically gonna want to position I'm what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be positioning Samus by jumping Inside of if you were to imagine this room was here, I'm going to get right in front of that door and Be in the space that that room would be and shoot the door right as I'm getting to it um, Shooting a door like I said is going to cause always cause a room to load. It's basically like a fourth load from earlier, except now, instead of using it to continue out, out, going out of bounds, you're going to be putting yourself in the space that that room would load as it loads, and the room will then load around you, and you are then safely back in bounds. That is called a uh, door warp. 
Uh, you can do something called ceiling warping in certain situations, um, which I will also demonstrate here. And that uh, can be done under other set of different variables, but I'll get to that when I am when it's actually relevant here. I will show um, what you want to do to get to do this properly. To do this, you don't want to jump and hit your head on this thing above you. That's not good. You're probably going to fall. In order to avoid hitting your head on that thing, you want to move out about as far as you really safely can. And it really, I'm just going to have to do this. It looks and seems scarier than it is. It's actually not as hard as you might think. But you want to jump toward the door and then shoot it as you're approaching the door. Like right before. And as you can see by doing that, I actually am now back in bounds safely and reflecting pool access here. Um, really quickly here, I will actually re-navigate my way back and go back out of bounds um, in the IBBF again because I can actually demonstrate a ceiling warp in reflecting pool access there. Um, for example, if you... I will be able to explain the variable. Actually, I will be able to do it before then even, so I, I won't even have to get all the way there, to be honest. So now I'm going to be back in the gathering hall here. Same method, you're just going to want to get yourself out of bounds. Also know that this is actually a pretty challenging ghetto jump at first for, for people, so don't be surprised if this ghetto jump gives you a little bit of trouble. I'm going to just demonstrate a different method of getting to this door here it, um, using some standable spots. Uh, on this side, which is the standard way to do this room, by the way, the only way to really jump to that door is to actually stand on this standable spot up in up here, and then and then jumping to the door. And as you can see, it can be a little bit challenging and, and tricky at first. Oh, see, and now I got stuck. So it's a good example of not getting far enough out to the standable spots. See how that room wasn't there yet? But now it is. That's kind of why you want to hesitate before moving forward here. Drop down onto the door. Jump to the sandable spots here. Again, you need to do this quickly in order to make this work correctly. However, it doesn't matter because this is now when I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to ceiling warp. Actually, now is a good time I can demonstrate too uh, non-corner ether jumping. I did earlier explain how ether jumping worked, and I did mention that there's a different way to do it. Um, the corner is just the safe way. You can actually also, once you're kind of comfortable with, you know, ether boundaries and whatnot. You just use any old any old wall or door or whatever it is that is the boundary for that room's box and you can get inside of that room's box until you start to bob up and down and then push yourself into the ether that's outside of it now this is a little bit more challenging because Instead of having that safety net of falling back into, you know, st uh, just nice, comfortable, standable ether, if you miss this input, you're going to fall back down again. And so it can be extremely frustrating. Um, again, you're strafing over an invisible ledge, or like an invisible boundary, and you have three frames to input a jump. So, I mean, it's just a more challenging method. 
basically what I find to be most consistent with it is you want to do as little movement as possible. So get yourself into the spot where you're going to get an ether jump. Like I said, it can take a second sometimes, but just keep mashing B and as soon as one's available, you'll get it. You'll notice that I push sideways as little as possible. That's because the less space there is between you and that invisible boundary, the more likely you are to be able to intuitively time uh, basically when to jump. And as you can see, if you do that correctly, you actually are able to um, gain enough height to get, uh, you know, to work, get wherever you're trying to go. Um, so now I will get back over there and demonstrate what a ceiling warp is um, and kind of explain the physics behind that because ceiling warps only work in certain with, with certain variables being true. Um, the first thing about a ceiling warp is we're going to be taking advantage of that weird funky collision that I was telling you about where a room is the game doesn't think I'm in the room that I am in. To do that I'm going to actually reload energy core which can be kind of challenging right here. Um, so energy core is now the room the game thinks I'm in and without transitioning so without pushing forward I'm going to jump and get out of that room's get out of the way of that door and I'm going to navigate my way over here. Now ceiling warping can only occur in a space that is not already occupied by another room's ether box. So for example you might think to yourself well if it works over here then why doesn't it work right here as well? The reason it doesn't work right here is because this room extends out to that point. And so anything back in this area right here is not going to be able to be ceiling warped. Um, also, it, it, uh, I don't know. I, okay, hold on. Basically, what you're going to need to do to ceiling warp here is be in morph ball mode. Oops. Whoa, that was odd. That was a, kind of a weird one. I don't know what happened right there, to be honest. That's all right. Just demonstrating. Uh... Ether, ether strats here. Um, this is fine anyway. I actually prefer to be facing this way for this particular ceiling warp anyways. Basically, I like to get and fall onto a space, oh man, I didn't do it right, hold on. Right here, this is perfect. Now, the method for this is to morph ball bomb and let Samus fall back onto the collision. You want to be holding forward while you're falling and then morph a brief moment after you hit the ceiling. Um, you don't want to morph as you hit the ceiling and you also need to be pushing forward but if you do that correctly as you can see you end up back in bounds um, you can do this anywhere uh, just as long as that set of variables is true um, now you need to be careful though if you ceiling warp because if you ceiling warp and you just continue on and try to go into furnace from here Guess what? Energy core is still there, actually. And if I were to try and do that, the game would crash. So you need to go back and you need to touch this door and back away from it. That literally then tells the game that you are actually in this room now and you're good. Now you can continue on forward. Um, I'm trying to think of the best place to demonstrate this and if you go in a place where it's necessary to do so. And so I'm actually going to go to a different wall crawl here. Um, uh, 
Um, it, really quickly, I'm just going to navigate to a different secret world and I'm going to use it to get out of bounds. And let me think of what the best way to actually get there is. Um, It isn't very close, bye. But it won't take too long to get to. Um, yeah, it's pretty much the only option I have. I mean, there's other secret roads in other places where it's possible, but this is a relevant one, so it, I feel as if it's worth showing. Actually, no, wait. Uh, what, to do what I'm going to demonstrate right now, I can actually just use a different wall. Um, I, I was going to go to Fendrana Shorelines and demonstrate it there. However, come to think of it, I can use a transition that's used at the end of uh, what we call the waves, uh, the training chamber wall crawl, uh, to show the same thing. Um, I'm not going to really explain this wall crawl as I go through it the way I did the IBBF. I kind of only did that as a tutorial to help you understand how to navigate around out of bounds um, using a relevant wall crawl. But just know that just like any other wall crawling now, this is essentially kind of different than any, you know, doing the stuff that you did. And there's different stuff that is that you need to know basically in order to get through each different wall crawl. So what happened right there, I'm, you, you'll wonder why I, I'm coming back up to this. It's because I basically have to. Um, damn it. Sorry, I'm not doing things correctly. Um, this is actually a relevant thing to mention though. The reason I'm strafing in front of this, uh, the reason I'm doing what I'm doing right now is I'm strafing in front of this morph ball tunnel. Morph ball tunnels work differently um, than other rooms out of bounds. And the room that I want to be out there, there's no other way to get it to appear other than to tell, like, be in a position where the game thinks I'm going to be going that way. So it's putting myself in front of this morph ball tunnel tells the game that I'm probably am going to be going through that tunnel. And so the room on the back side of it is going to be there when I go out of bounds. If I were to have done that first, that room just would not be there, basically. And if I were to fall below the air, like below the height of this morph ball tunnel, essentially, before getting out of bounds, so like I fell to that tree, basically, jumping to that tree, basically, the reason I had to redo this is because the game then didn't, no longer thought I was going to be going that way and the room unloaded so I had to reload it basically um, this is called the training chamber wall crawl uh, by the way it's it's used in 100% if as a more advanced strat to uh, do that portion of the game a little, a little bit quicker um, again I'm not going to really explain what I'm doing as I go along here but Except for this one thing, I guess, because this is again relevant. Kind of also relating to the way that these morph ball tunnels are, how they're different. Now that this room is at least there and loaded, the way to transition it is to strafe across the top of that and then jump, and it will cause Piston Tunnel to, to be the active room. So, apart from that, that's kind of the only relevant part of that. Just falling onto the sandable spot here and using it to touch the loading trigger for this next room. 
Again, I need to strafe on the top of that, and now training chamber is active. I'm going to use standable collision here to work my way. Oh, kind of. Work my way over to here. Again, remember that anything that is not an edge, basically, or collision sticking out of bounds is going to be sticky. And so now this is a good example of um, a different type of door transition and the reason I came all the way over here. This room is not there. Guess what? Strafing across that door is going to do nothing but cause me to fall. <laughs> and it's not going to cause this room to appear. That's because there's actually a loading trigger that needs to either be hit in this room before that room will load, which is possible to touch out of bounds here, but it is not, it's not convenient by any means. And so we do something called, uh, we do something called, um, this door transition, I actually am blanking on the name of it at the moment, but it is used to basically force this room to load. To do that, I need to shoot this door. I shot it. Now, it doesn't open yet because I'm not within that door's plane, basically. To, to, to trick the game into thinking I'm in its plane, I'm going to carefully jump off the back side of the door and allow myself to fall until I'm kind of level with the door. But because I don't want to just keep falling and I want to get back on top of the door, I'm going to use my space jump to then get back on top of the door. Like such. As you can see, that then caused the light to reappear on the door, and that means that you were successful. The room then loaded. And now, simply pushing left and jumping will cause this room to appear. And that is um, a different type of door transition right there. Um, I might as well talk about it now. Um, Sometimes you might need to do something that we call dropping a room. Now, this was half of the reason I wanted to go over to Fendrana to show this, because it's actually necessary for that particular wall crawl. However, you can do it wherever, so I might as well just show it here. Um, let's say I want to drop training chamber. Like, I don't want it to be visible anymore, basically. To do that, you want to get you want to position, uh, for some reason I'm like, yeah, be wary, collision out of bounds can be funky sometimes. I'm actually going to be, do it on this side too because there's that collision above me there. I basically want to be above, first of all I want this room to be the one that's loaded, and I want to shoot the door. I want to jump back behind it and jump back, back up on top of it. Doing that, as you can see, caused training chamber to disappear. That's important because now when I try to transition to the next room, it will cause training chamber to just completely disappear and the game won't crash. Let me just take one moment here to think about if there's anything else that I sh that's relevant to cover. I've covered door transitions. I've covered the way collision kind of works. Um, I've covered ether. I've covered warping back and bounds. Ah, there is one last thing I guess I can, well, I don't even need to show it, but just know that if any room has an open ceiling to it, so like there isn't basically a ceiling on the room and there's just open space, you can actually just use that open space to morph and just fall back into the room. Like you can just be above it basically and fall into the room wherever there's an open ceiling and be back in balance. That's probably the easiest method for getting back in balance, to be perfectly honest, um, anywhere. So yeah, uh, just for the meme here, I will go ahead and finish this wall crawl super quick. We 
You gotta be kidding me. There we go. So again, I'm actually going to be doing a ceiling warp right here. Morph, push forward, and unmorph as soon uh, a brief moment after you've touched the landed back down on the on the the ceiling there. And so that is wall crawling. Um, I hope this is helpful.